show them what's best for them based on what percentage down payment um, and, and, and sort of coach them and, and teach them uh, the best way to save money in the long run, whether it's you know single finance mortgage insurance or single premium mortgage insurance is not finance. And so it's really structuring that as well. That that's, that's less of a guidelines per se, but it's more of a, you know, client coaching aspect of it at the beginning there to, and that, that sort of keeps the man, my, my conversion rate. Once, once I'm working with a client, I have very few clients that leave me for another, another lender. Um, I have one recently that's was just because someone referred her out to someone that did no mortgage insurance loan with no down payment. And I was doing an FHA loan. So obviously I couldn't, couldn't really compete with that. But really when I, when I started working with the client and started coaching them on the options um, and, and setting the expectations up front as far as, you know, trying to get the documentation in before they start um, actually making offers on homes that, that speeds up the process too. So, you know, collecting those documents uh, while, they're, while they're out looking for houses, that speeds up the process when you actually garner a contract too, so that you can get the file into underwriting sooner. Um, you know, some clients will send them in, some, some of them won't, but for the most part, um, you know, it's, it's making sure they know that if you going to collect those items like your pay stubs, W2s, things like that, when you're looking for a house, it really speeds the process along with the garner contract and you're not waiting um you know seven eight days to submit the file you can you can spend it in the first day or so once you're once you have everything ready to go um, unless you're having to update some items if they're looking for a house for a couple months like that. So would you say uh, a good rule of thumb is to try to have that thing submitted in the first 24 or 48 hours after you've talked to the clients yeah so as soon as you can so as soon as they're going to contract and they sign disclosures um you know making sure at that point you have enough to to get a, a credit decision there um and you're not going to go on not ready um when, when the file submit is, is something that the underwriter can make a decision on based on what you have in the file there but um also making sure you're, you're looking out for the red flags um and you're actually reviewing the documentation um you know, while you're collecting it so that, that's the other thing is you know not just throwing the information out there to underwriting and let them look at it and then they find a large deposit or they find this or that, they have the source. Uh, just go ahead and ask for that information up front. Uh, so like I said, you're not chasing that you know, throughout the process there. They could take a little bit longer to get your hands on. I mean, all these things seem like LO 101 to me. There's still people out there not doing this, right? Yeah, yeah there, there's a lot of people out there. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people, they get the sale and they, they try to get the file and underwriting as quickly as possible without actually um, doing the, the sort of LO work on it. You know. Do you think maybe some, to some degree, our culture of, of, of selling people on that you're going to have an assistant has got people being complacent where you, maybe we've even gotten some LOs that, that are maybe, I don't know, it seems like to me that it's a little bit maybe lazy or maybe inexperienced where they're, where they've relied on the assistant too much. So they don't know how to do it themselves as well. Yeah, um, it's just certainly knowing knowing how the process works and moving. Of course, I started as an assistant, so I know exactly how everything moves along with the process and how to how to make that you know move as fast, as quickly as possible. Um, so that that helps to actually know how the process works and how to actually do it yourself um, prior to working with an assistant. Um, yeah. and that that really makes it better for everyone in the end. Well, for the assistants that are trying to chase everything. So that initial consultation, how much time do you think you actually spend on the phone with them with that? What would be a good goal for a loan officer? It depends on the client. Um, like I said, if, if I'm really working up different options for them, you know, I, it, it may, may be something where I, I don't even do it all in one call there. You know, I'll, I'll actually sit down and, and work the options through different mortgage insurance routes and everything. And then we'll, we'll have a follow up um, based on what I email them with a few different scenarios and things like that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, make sure I'm, I'm teaching them as much as possible what the best route is um, so that I look like the expert and I'm, I'm not going to be shopped as, as much as um, others may be when it comes to rate and things like that. So maybe two calls. So what do you think if you were to split it out? Let's just say, let's give you a couple different scenarios. Let's give you a client that you know that's just, you just know that they're probably going to go FHA because of down payment challenges. So you, you kind of, well, you know where you're going. Will you try to kind of get that all on one call or, or you still have some, maybe two calls for that for options or what would you think? Yeah, for that, yeah, for those, I, I try to get all on one call um, and try to get them to do on the application on the website. Um, you know, a lot of them, for some reason, a lot of people these days don't want to do it on the website, but I, I try to push them as, as much as I can to do the application on the website so that then I can, I can pull everything in. 
um, and have a, a pretty quick call with them. And I'm not you know, spending a lot of time on, on someone that um, knows that they're in a certain bucket of, of what they're doing there. But if it's someone that's um, sort of a, a higher higher profile client where you know, they, they're buying a six six hundred thousand dollar house and they're, they're putting they want to maybe put down 20 percent down maybe less and then really coaching them through what, what's best for them um you know, that that really helps keep that kind of clients um as, as opposed to them right in the end coming, coming back and you know oh i, I found a better rate at, at this this bank or xyz um so I, i'll spend a little bit more time with them you know i'll have initial conversation with them and you know, depending on their schedule, talk 15, 20 minutes, work some options up for them. Um, if they want to, then email back their thoughts on it, or we can have another conversation uh, after the fact. That's sort of how that goes. So you think it'd be fair, let's go back to the FHA client. Would you be fair to say you could kind of, so you have their initial conversation, maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes, uh, and then have them do the online app, or sometimes they've already done the online app? Yeah, for the most part, like whenever they're referred over to me, um, I try to get as many people as I can to do the online application. Um, that way I'm not spending too much time on a, on a phone call uh, without truly knowing where the, where the client stands. Because we have a lot of those people that um, they'll, they'll want to talk to you before they do the application and you know, they tell you they have you know, a 620 credit score and it turns out they have a 580 credit score or a 570 credit score. So you're, you're really wasting a lot of time on those clients up front. Uh, so you can sort of get you can sort of get on the hook with those clients where you're wasting wasting valuable time with them. Um, so when when someone starts to mention anything about you know potential credit issues things like that, I try to push them as much as I can to the website. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if, obviously, if someone that says you know I have an 800 credit score, you know I don't want to do that patient on the website. You can do it on the phone. I'll certainly sit down and talk with that person um, on the phone. As, but for the most part, if, if if they mention something about credit and they have the ability to do the application online, I, I try. To get them up there. So that and would be a shorter that, conversation. That so that'd be a shorter conversation. You just refer them to the online application and follow up with them after you looked at that. Yeah. So then, then the uh, the follow up call is when, whenever I review the credits, um, and then we can go over the options for 15, 20 minutes there. Gotcha. So let's say that goes well. You send them to online. They do the application. You come back. Uh, What's that conversation sound like? What kind of time frame do you think you spend with them then? Let's just say this is the FHA scenario. Fairly straightforward. Yeah, I mean, those are typically pretty quick. Um, you know, I'm, I'm having to do more coaching these days to make sure, um, you know, clients are aware of the overall cost along because a lot of a lot of them these days, um, you know, just think they, they need the, just the closing, just the um, down payment portion of it. But so I have one. I'm here recently. I'm trying to coach them up more um, with those type of clients that there's a lot more that goes into it that you'll need. Let's say, you, if, let's say you do an FHA loan with three and a half percent down. Um, you know, you need your closing costs, your your escrows, and really showing. I, I, I give them a breakdown too um, of what it looks like. So I'll usually send them a, a fees worksheet too, because um, if you don't, then in the end they're gonna they're gonna say I don't really have the money that you really want me to do here if you didn't really go over the options there. Whether if you just tell them they they can do say three and a half percent down payment and you don't really tell them what, what all goes in the, in other, otherwise to that. Um, I mean, you, you really want to send them a fee break, fee sheet breakdown. Um, up front. So that initial call, you know, I'll talk with them for 15, 20 minutes and then I'll send a follow up email with, um, this is, this is the, you know, what the option we looked at, this is what the, the breakdown looks like. It, you know, if you were to move forward with this, you know, price range of a house, um, and you know, I'm, I'm sort of trying to um, trying to perfect that process too, because I'm trying to make sure that you know, clients that have limited money um, also know that there's other things they need as far as deposits and appraisals and things like that too. So I'm I'm actually trying to perfect part of that part of my process as well, so there's no surprises when it comes to that too. But did you did you have a checklist of kind of what all you go through, or is just this just old habits now that's easy for you to? Yeah, it's all habits. I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't really, I'm not a huge calendar checklist type of person unless I have a specific appointment or something like that on my calendar. Or, um, yeah, so my, my day is, it's a, it's a lot of, a lot to keep up with and, and I probably need to do better as far as, uh, you know, how I keep up with it. But uh, yeah, I'll talk to many clients a day and it's just a matter of 
I, I probably should use some, some better systems to, to schedule well, those type of things as opposed to just doing it on, on the fly. I would bet that you're a lot more systematic than you think you are. You just haven't taken the time to document it. So I bet you do go through a lot of these things, things, some conversations the same way all the time, just because repetition is what leads you to do that. Yeah. It's interesting. Man, I know this has probably been more like a, a, a fact-finding mission for me than it is a coaching call for you, but I just find a lot of our folks that are needing this kind of stuff, so I appreciate you spending a little bit of time to walk you through what that process is like. So yeah, let me absolutely. give you a couple minutes and, and you know, see if there's anything out there. Where, where do you feel like your, your biggest wins are right now, and where do you feel like your biggest opportunities for growth are right now? Man, so I actually, um, in the last two weeks, I, you know, I sort of – I found this new real estate office in the town that I live in. Um, they, they opened up an office right in downtown. And so I started reaching out to some of the agents and I, I, I got one on the hook and, you know, she then, you know, said she wanted to meet and she actually brought the, she wanted me to meet at her office and she actually brought the owner of the office, the owner of the company with her to meet with me at that meeting. So I was actually able to meet with the owner of the company they have like 25 agents there. She's you know, probably half are doing you know, production there, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to, to work that. that was, I had that meeting last Monday. Um, so still you know, there's new relationships are still happening. Awesome. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm still calling on some, I'm trying to land some bigger agents as well. You know, I'm mailing out playbooks um, and I need to need to follow up on, on some of those calls today um, to, to try to nail some bigger agents um, and, maybe they're more open as, as we see that a lot of lenders out there are not doing the best jobs um, with communication or, you know, closing times or, you know, even some of them with, with their actual pre-approvals and getting denials these days. I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of denials that they were lenders, but uh, so I'm trying to land some, some bigger lenders by mailing out the playbooks and I need to follow up on some of those calls that they actually have scheduled um, for that. I'm going to do that on the way to a, a realtor appointment that I have today. Awesome. Man, I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleased with what's going on. I'm really glad you got assistant. And, you know, what I would probably want to coach you on on that is just making sure that um, you know what their, um, what role they're going to play, what you're going to offload to them, and that they take ownership of that, where it really does free you up more time to go do something else. Because, I mean, you're very good, done a great job of where you're at. I want to continue to see you grow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what that's what I'm gearing towards. So. All right, my friend. Well, I appreciate your time, Mr. Sean. You have a great yeah. day. Right, you too. Thank you.